Okay, you guys, a couple of things about the P17 I wanted to talk to you about is when you're disassembling the P17, you have to realize that there are pins. And what a lot of people don't understand about pins is when you put the pin back in, you think that it's the same size on both ends, but not always true. Uh, taper pins will have one side that's wider and one side's thinner. And what you do is you tap it in and on one side it's going to be really tight and that's what locks a taper pin in. So the definition of a taper pin is a pin that is two different dimensions on each side. And this would be kind of like your typical taper pin. So when you disassemble your P17, you want to know what side of that pin um, is which. So when you take it out, you lay it down carefully so you know which side is which. Or you can grab a micrometer or something like that if you don't know which is which. Now this one is quite obvious because this pin here has knurling on it. So all you have to do is pay attention to which side has that roughness, that knurling. I don't know if you can see that close up or not. So, um, that's one key thing about disassembling this uh, P17 because if you don't put the pins in right, they're going to loosen up on you while you're shooting. So, and a lot of times there was uh, people that had complained, even on larger air guns, why taper pins come out and they would uh, send the gun back or they'd call Pyramid Air or something. And then they would find out that the person took apart the gun but didn't put the taper pins back in the right way. So that's why everything was loosening up. So just because it looks like it's in the right way, it doesn't mean it is. Um, one side might be bigger than the other. You never know. Some of these taper pins, they're the same size on both sides. Sometimes they're different on both sides. So you want to be aware of that. Okay, so enough of the pins. Um, the next thing is it's easy to learn the P17 parts and it is easy to put it back together. If you just remember one critical thing is that open, you want to open the P17 very gradually and slowly because what's going to happen is you're going to have a spring right here. And I'll show you the spring here. This spring right here in particular, what it's doing is it's catching it's catching up here under tension right about there right about there and then this other parts way up here so you can tell in order for me to be centered right here I've got to push really hard on that spring see right there so this is something to be aware of you're gonna see something pop out at you when you take the cover off of the handle you're going to have this part of the spring hanging out. Don't get alarmed by it. Just uh, remember that um, once you start taking apart this P17, you want to take pictures. I do have a video of pictures that I took of the P17. It's good to take pictures because it gives you a way of knowing how to get back uh, once you take things apart. Pictures show you how the gun was assembled before you took it apart. So pictures do come in handy, little snapshots. And also with the little snapshots, it allows you to show other people online what the parts look like. So it's really nice in both ways. One way is to help you, and the other way is to show nice uh, pictures of the internals of the P17. So I'm going to put this aside. And I want to show you... I want to show you the O-rings involved in the whole entire gun. This here is a valve, and this valve right here, the way this works is if you pull on this end right here, the trigger, well, the trigger pulls this end right here, and it drops this pin right up here with an O-ring on it. It drops it lower and allows the air to come out. So it's going to look... It's going to look like this. So at the top of that pin there, there's an O-ring, and it's going to allow the release of the air once, once this lever right here gets pulled out. So you can see it's under tension. See that? So there's two O-rings, and they're not your typical hardware O-rings. So I'm going to line this up with this cloth here so I can show you. Um, 
one o-ring here one o-ring here that's your valve assembly right there and when you take off the rings you should use something like this dental hook so inside the gun it's going to look like this it's going to be right inside that hole there like that okay so you got two o-rings with this valve assembly here you can see both o-rings again and then it gets screwed in right here you can see the screw threads uh, the next part here is the one that goes out the most would probably be this right here uh, the piston ring now the piston ring there's one thing you guys have to understand is that sometimes the manufacturer will make a mistake uh, when they're doing their machining on this uh, tube what happens is the piston goes into the tube and as the piston compresses it compresses all that air and it holds it right in here where that valve is now what happens is the machinists that make this gun if you look at that hole that I got circled there that's the air hole and if you take your finger and feel on the other side it should be real smooth in there uh, one of these P17's I got was defective but I fixed it I took my finger and I ran it inside there and I felt a sharp edge so it wasn't smoothed down at the factory so that's a critical error of the factory making the P17 so what would happen is this piston would go inside and then when it rubbed against that hole it would take a small notch out of the, the rubber piece the rubber o-ring so let me show you what that looks like here's the original part right here and if you look let me hold it up for you here I'm gonna hold it up on the top where the neck is I don't know if you can see the neck or not see that neck let me see see I'm holding the camera at the same time but see that neck right there that's why this o-ring was defective it didn't work it didn't hold the air because it was chewing away at it right there because it had a burr in it and with that sharp edge right here that was causing the problem of the P17 not to work so you want to be aware of that from the factory now it could be your fault too if you're not going according to manufacturer specs if you're letting this o-ring get dry and you're and you're not putting your lithium grease on here it only takes a very very thin film of lithium grease or molly grease on here to help with the extra compression that this uh, o-ring does so typically what you do is when you have it open you can just brush a little bit of lithium grease you don't need a ton but it's critical that you don't let the o-ring ever dry out so on hot summer days you might be using this gun and you might find that's going dry what you want to do is wipe the cylinder while it's on the gun and then just apply maybe a nice little drop of lithium grease and start over and give it the grease it needs to function properly so that's one of the errors that uh, that we make if the manufacturer has done their part is we're not following uh, the procedure of proper lubrication and care of the weapon here so anyway so basically you got three o-rings and what I did is I got some free samples from o-rings west and this is the part number right here this is the wrong part number but I never got back to them to ask if they would send part number 116 which is smaller this o-ring right here is is actually one millimeter smaller I know that sounds like it's not a lot but these right here they're very hard to get they're very hard to get in the cylinder once you have them on here because they're oversized and what happens is they chew into that hole even if it is properly chamfered and properly deburred uh, they can still chew on that hole which means I have the wrong size so I need a 116 not a 117 and it's basically uh, basically this would be your 116 this is your 117 in this package here but being that they were nice to me and they sent me o-rings for free I didn't want to call them back and say hey can you send me 116s I feel like I would probably need to pay them at least uh, 
to get them, you know, to offer me that once again. So, um, and this company works off of, uh, you have to have a minimum order. I don't know if it's hundreds of dollars or what it is. So we need to find a way to get to Beeman or some other company that would offer us uh, just buying, like, say, like a dozen and not having to buy, like, a big case or whatever. But these guys make uh, O-rings for the government and stuff like that. They make all different types of O-rings. So I might get back to them and talk to them about that. But enough said on the O-rings. If you have your O-rings, uh, this gun is probably going to outlive you. Because as you can see, I've got two of them here. I've got one that's for parts and this one here. And then I've got another one in the other room. Uh, this is uh, a very nice gun if you don't mind the pumping. You know, the compression as you're pumping. Uh, with that piston going in here, it takes a little bit of force to close that hatch right here. It takes a little bit of force when you open it up and close it. Now, uh, mods, there's several ways you can mod this uh, gun, but I want to tell you a critical error that a machinist did online, and I corrected him on it because he didn't understand. Even I'm not saying he's a bad machinist. I'm just saying he wasn't cautious uh, about when he was working on it. And one of the mistakes he made is when he was measuring when he was measuring he was thinking that the piston came all the way up here to the wall so what he did is he he made a rod he cut this in half and made a rod so it would stretch a little bit further to give him more compression but when he was doing that what he didn't realize is that the piston actually stops at the wall right there and what he was doing is he was that quarter inch that was left there was the part of the beginning of the wall. What he was doing is he was pushing that piston in so hard that it was stretching the gun a quarter inch. And that's one of the mistakes I made when I first tried to upgrade this thing many years ago, and I'll show you the results of that. But first, I want to tell you where the piston actually sits. So there you got the wall. When it's compressed, you only got one thirty seconds of an inch. I don't know if you can see that or not. You only got one thirty seconds of an inch where you can build up on that piston to give you more compression. And the way you would build it up is right on here, at the top here. And one way to get a little more compression, as long as you're within, you know, shorter than one thirty second of an inch, is you want to take some of this right here, some of this aluminum duct tape. And what this is, is this is very, very thin aluminum metal. And what you can do is you can cut a circle, you know, cut a precision circle using one of these templates of aluminum uh, tape, real thin aluminum tape here, and make sure the surface is clean and there's no oil or anything on the surface and it's dry. And what you want to do is you want to place, you want to place that shim right on top of the piston here. And what that does is that gives you a little bit more compression as that piston is going forward. Okay, so that's one way to mod this air gun. Um, another way you can mod it uh, in reverse, which means make it easier to pump, is you can take away volume from the piston. And there are several ways you can do that. You can drill a hole through here, put it back in, and then test it, and then drill a hole, test it, drill a hole, test it, till you reach your desired velocity. I was mentioning that 325, anything lower than that, would make this a 20 yard and under gun, so you don't want to do that. But I think 325 feet per second, it would probably close a little easier when you're pumping it. When you're closing the hatch here, there's going to be less force because the volume of the air that's being pushed is less because you have a hole in the piston here. You have a hole driven down. And somebody said, well, what if you go too deep? and it doesn't have enough compression to push the pellet out, well, then what you can do is you can refill that hole with epoxy. But another clever way I was thinking if somebody wanted to tackle it would be, you know them Allen bolts? Them Allen bolts that go, that go inside, uh, like parts and stuff, you'll see Allen bolts. Well, you can have an Allen bolt that can go a little bit deeper than the flat surface of this right here, and you can have the Allen bolt go, say, about this deep or something like that, so you can adjust the power uh, of the compression. 
the deeper the Allen bolt is, the less velocity, the higher, the more it comes to the factory velocity of about 400 feet per second for a 7 grain pellet. So when the Allen bolt is flush right here, it's going to be 400. But when you turn the Allen bolt, say, a little bit, like a sixteenth of an inch in, turning it in so it goes down the Allen bolt, the more you turn the Allen bolt, uh, the less velocity you're going to have. So that would be a neat thing for a machinist to do. I worked in a machine shop, but I, I don't want to be working on threading this thing and stuff like that and, you know, trying to come up with something. But some of you guys in a machine shop, or if you know somebody, you could have somebody do that, install an Allen bolt right on the top here, and make sure that the Allen bolt uh, can recess inside maybe about an eighth of an inch or something like that. So you can test out what kind of velocity you're getting. And like I said, if you want to get you want to get more of the factory velocity, keep it flush. If you want less velocity, you can turn it back in. So that's one thing that hasn't been tested uh, to demod. Uh, the P17, if you want to call it a D-mod. But the thing about building up the piston now to give it more power is it makes sense to some degree, but you're not going to really gain a whole lot of velocity on this thing. So sometimes it's better just to leave it factory. But if you wanted to go ahead and test it, you guys could. I tested it with aluminum tape on here, and I think I got it to 425. But if I keep building up that aluminum tape sooner or later like I said I'm gonna hit the wall and then it's gonna stretch now I'm gonna show you what the stretch looks like and this machinist guy he made a mistake because what he did is if you look at this pin I I basically stretched this one one many many years ago when I tried the same thing if you look at this pin look at how it's bent well that pin is stretched so what it's doing is inside the frame here in the front inside the frame in the front here where this pin goes is when you're cocking the gun what you're actually doing is the spacing between the barrel and the port or the air where the air comes out is actually making it further away so what you end up with is you think the barrel's touching right here on that o-ring there's no o-ring installed in here right now but usually there's an o-ring there you think that it's flat against the o-ring but it's actually out that far so you see that that pin stretches stretches that barrel and the whole frame this way so when you close it you got that big gap and when you have that big gap you lose velocity so what happened to him is he started losing velocity and that's why because he stretched that pin he stretched that pin because the piston had nowhere to go but push push that up against that wall and the only thing that wasn't strong enough to give was the frame which is this right here the frame so once again uh, the machinist he took this and cut it in half and he threaded these two bars right here so that you can turn it to adjust it but what he did is he made that off the assumption once again, he made that off the assumption that, hey, look at that. Look at all that space I got right there. I've got, I've got, from, I got all the way to here. And I marked it with a Sharpie to show you where it actually really is. So he was assuming that the piston goes all the way here, but it doesn't, and I'll show you. So I marked it here. See my finger right there? Watch this. When you put it in... okay it just stopped it just stopped right at that mark okay when I pull it out this is why you need to do precision measuring if you're gonna mess with this thing hold on a sec here so you, you've got to really do your measurements on this thing if you want to work on it um, so my fingers right here and once again if you look here that mark, that mark right there is where the piston stops. So anytime you mod this and make this longer, what you're doing is you're pushing, you're pushing this up against the wall. And these two things are stronger than the frame. 
So what happens is the frame starts to give and then you've pretty much messed up. So once again you got this valve, you got two O-rings and they're right where I'm putting them here so you can see them. So you got them two O-rings right there. And then you got this one. Now I might add that these are not your typical hardware O-rings. Everybody thinks they can run down to the hardware store and put standard O-rings in this thing. And when you first do it, it seems like it's okay, but then after a while you find out that you have to have precision O-rings in here. If you're even a millimeter, even a half a millimeter off, the O-ring will not do its work as far as holding air. Now this is going to outlive the gun much longer. These two O-rings right here on the valve assembly, these two O-rings right here, are probably going to be lasting for a really long time whereas this one is going to be probably be occasionally replaced because this is the one that really gets the wear and tear and even if you have a hole that has been machined properly where it does have a proper chamfer and it has been deburred and polished uh, behind that hole even if you do and you're using your lithium grease you're still going to have rub where that hole is. So a, a neat thing you can do, sometimes I'll do this, is sometimes I'll rotate uh, I'll rotate this every once in a while. I'll take it out and then I'll turn it just a little bit further so that that round hole can rub on a different surface of that o-ring. So that's one way you can cheat uh, making a, an o-ring last longer is just put it in a different place because once the o-ring's on here it's stuck really hard and it's not going to move side to side this way so what you want to do is you want to physically pull it out with the dental tool and then move it over just a little bit and then rotate it so if you rotate it you can keep it having its life but I suppose it's easier just to get the right o-rings you know so you have extra o-rings but this is for people that might be on an extreme budget and don't even have a dollar to spend <laughs> they might want to think of this option uh, of rotating this and just pushing it up just a little bit further so it gets past the hole so that the hole can work on another surface and then keep doing it and keep doing it keep doing it like in a full circle so it's not always wearing away on one part of the o-ring and like I said even though it's chamfered even though it's polished and it's going to last a long time you still have to realize that the rubber part may, might still be touching that hole and over time it's still going to eat it away a little bit maybe not as dramatic as a manufacturer error like this but over time you're still going to get that little burr right in there so that's one thing to consider so that's what I want to say about mods and demods and properly putting the gun together making sure you take pictures making sure once again that you look at your uh, especially your pins because everybody thinks pins are easy they're not easy because if you put the pin in the wrong way it's going the gun's going to loosen up so once again you'll have a pin you'll have a pin and you'll think hey this is the same on both ends not always true so you want to make sure that you know which side is which because you might have to disassemble the gun again and that's no fun so you don't want to put it in the wrong way the advantage of having extra P17s is they are very good with sights especially in the windage it's metal but one thing they lack on is the screw that goes in here for elevation one thing they lack on is they don't have tight tolerances for that um, for that elevation screw right here this elevation screw, I kind of marked it because I wanted to know where I was at 25 yards. You guys seen me do 25 yard shots where the gun was actually sighted in for 15 yards. Remember I had that drop where it was dropping on the bottom of the pop can? Well, since then I've adjusted it for 25 yards to be smack on. And if you look right there, I got the orange paint to show where it's at. Now what, happened was, what happens with this screw is it's kind of loose in there. 
and uh, the threads, when it grabs the threads, it doesn't really grab the threads all that good. So if any of you have any suggestions, I was thinking maybe some mild Loctite in there would fill in the gap where the threads don't meet the screw properly. Or something thick that you can rub on the screw to make it stick in better. Somebody was saying uh, some of that, or just put some something on the thread of the screw to to make it so that there's a little more tension like that copper stuff that you put on like uh, lug nuts and stuff or just putting something on it to make it more resistant so that when you turn it it's going to stay where it is rather than when you're pumping it see what happens when you pump it you close it really tight it shakes and what it does is it tends to shake that screw loose even if you don't have the elevation maxed out now there is a point in every air gun where you have your elevation maxed out too high where say the screw is almost topped out and almost going to fall out you never want to do that but I don't have this maxed out I could have it at 15 or 25 yards and still that little screw will try to loosen up on me so that's something to be aware of that the tolerances of this machine screw going in that threaded bolt down there isn't exactly uh, good for tolerance so you have to find a way to uh, fill the gaps of the of the screw and the nut that's in there and uh, I might put a little bit of Loctite on here but I might I might use the kind that is able to free it up a little bit so I can still adjust it so the Loctite is probably going to fill the gaps where the screw doesn't meet the nut properly as far as the threading goes so but other than that, other than this loose sight configuration here, you want to keep your eye on that. It's a very, very accurate pistol. And Beeman has a really nice rifled barrel. It's button choked. So it's really nice. So even for $32 to $40, you get something that's very, very accurate. More accurate than I am, or what I should say is more accurate than I can shoot it. Even, even bench rest, you still have to have eyes. Uh, to shoot this. So I wouldn't doubt if somebody could, with the right pellet, could put five shots um, in a one-inch group at 25 yards. I have no doubt that this pistol is able to do it. So here you got the here you got the tap part. I don't know if I can show you the rifling or not. It's got really nice rifling. And the way Beeman does it is the Beeman pellets are specifically designed to fit in that flat surface there whereas some air guns have a tapered a more tapered area right here and that's why Beeman pellets don't fit in other guns like they do in Beeman guns so Beeman uh, flattened it out here so the pellets uh, the Beeman brand pellets so that they seat properly now Crossman if you put Crossman pellets in here you'll find out that the skirts aren't wide enough and you have like gaps and stuff even though you can get it flush in you still have gaps around the sides and that's not a good seated pellet, so that's not going to work out as good, even though you might get some good shots. Now, the way the Beeman barrel does is, it's, is it starts out uh, kind of snug, but then as it gets to the end, it gets smaller in diameter right at the end here. And right before it leaves the last land and groove, it gets choked. Uh, the pellet gets choked to a smaller size. And that's uh, so that the last land and groove grips it properly so it can give it that nice twist or spin. Now you never want to use anything metal on the crown here. The crown is very delicate. You never want to use anything metal when you're cleaning the barrel. You want to protect that crown because that crown is your is the most important part of accuracy of any air gun is that crown. Same thing with handguns. I told a guy that had uh, he had a, a Glock and a couple other handguns. He had these uh, steel stands for his gun where the barrel where the barrel of the gun would be like this and then you'd have a steel rod through the barrel to make the gun stand up that's a bad idea because what you're doing is you're touching that crown and so unless that thing is plastic coated or it's or it's made out of plastic or some other material what you're doing over time by putting that gun on that stand is you're grinding away that crown and then you'll eventually have to re-crown the barrel so as you can see here with my three Beeman P17s, I've got this one here. I've got an extra barrel. 
which probably probably won't be able to be used unless I used it for a specific purpose. Um, maybe I could take this one, if some of you guys know about small magnets, drilling a hole right here and seeding a tiny magnet in there so that I could put BBs in here. So maybe this barrel, we can change this into a BB gun and just shoot BBs because we have an extra barrel. We have two extra barrels if the other one, if I decide to make that one a parts one. But for sure, this one is a parts one. So this barrel, we could put this barrel inside here and shoot BBs. So that's one thing about you guys, if you're like me, uh, that have worked in a machine shop is to drill a hole right here in your second barrel and find a tiny magnet on eBay or Amazon.com that could fit in a small area and then once you drill that hole put that magnet in there and then that's going to hold your BB so you singly load the BB here and then see how it works see if the BB's uh, do any good I know that the BB's going to have a pretty good velocity to it, probably more than 400. Although um, BBs have a thing called blow-by, which means they're fast, but the thing you have to realize is that a BB's only got one seal. So looking down the barrel, if you were to put a piece of round shot lead in here, and you look down the barrel like I am now, you would see uh, light where the lands and grooves are still on the edge, and that's because... Um, Round shot lead has only got one seal, whereas a pellet's got two seals, one in the head, one in the skirt. Same thing with a BB. If you put a BB in here, you'd still see light on the sides of the BB. So even though BBs are fast, they don't seal properly like they should, but at least you get some speed out of it. And accuracy would be, would be okay, but not, not as good as pellets, that's for sure. But it'd be something to test out, you know, in the long run. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching the video. I've had these for decades. I've had them pulled apart several times. Uh, if you take a picture of the assembly, like when you're taking it apart, you just, you know, as you're taking one part away at a time, take a snap picture. Like if I was to take this part out, snap a picture first, then... This part, like the barrel or the grip or whatever you want to take a picture of, um, you probably don't need to take pictures of these, as you can pretty much tell, you know, where the O-rings are going to go back. So on this one, the only thing you can take apart is the O-rings. You can't take apart this rod here because it's it's welded in to that nut right there. So you'd have to take that out, and then you'd have to weld it back on somehow. So. And you don't really need to take it apart. It's spring-loaded, and that spring is going to last pretty much forever, I think. <laughs> so virtually the only parts you're going to need for this gun is basically just O-rings. That's it. Once you have all the O-rings, like I said, this thing is probably going to outlive you for sure. And the, the interesting thing about it, it's only $30, or 32 to 40 bucks. So it's amazing if you don't mind... You know, if you don't mind pumping the pistol and stuff like that, 